Joanne Banco. I'm an author and a sewing instructor and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own wraps. I've brought a couple wraps from my book and those are obviously for cool weather uh, wear, but how about a wrap for warm weather wear? Um, like the sheer wrap made from chiffon. It's basically the same shape that you see in my book. It's a large rectangle with a U-shaped opening for the front. You may be able to find a commercial pattern that's similar, but we're going to provide a free download on the website for the sheer wrap pattern so you can make your own. So let's talk a little bit about the wrap itself. This wrap is very versatile. It can actually be worn in a variety of different ways. If you look, you can wrap this over the shoulder and add a pin for an accessory for a great dressy look. This also can be just be draped over the shoulders, worn over a sundress, over a sheath, even looks good over a tank top and jeans. This wrap can also be tied in the front. Let me show you that. I'm just going to take these loose ends and make a loop and there you are. So if you take a look at this wrap up close, you would see that it has just two shoulder seams and then a narrow hem all around the outer edge. Today I'm going to show you how to cut sheer chiffon and how to sew the sheer chiffon French seam for the shoulder seams and the narrow hem that you see finishing this wrap. So let's take a look at cutting first of all. When you cut a sheer chiffon fabric you're going to see that this can be just a little bit tough to deal with at the cutting table. This type of fabric likes to move around. It actually kind of wiggles a little bit. So in order to tame the fabric, what we're going to do is we're going to smooth out a layer of tissue paper. You can use just ordinary white gift tissue like you see we have here or any other clean white paper. And you want to put that down on your cutting surface first and then lay your um, pattern, if you're tracing a pattern or using a commercial pattern, it's going to work the same way. But you're going to lay your pattern down on the surface. You're going to make sure your selvage edge is pinned so it's even with the paper's edge. And you want to take your time with this step. You want to make sure that's nice and neat and even so it doesn't move. Then we're going to pin all the way through the tissue and the pattern all the way through the paper layer. So we want to use fine, sharp pins for this. I prefer the glass head pins for both sewing and for cutting the sheer fabric. Now, what about cutting? If we use ordinary scissors for cutting a very sheer chiffon fabric, it's very likely that those scissors are going to slip a little bit and our cutting edges are going to be a little bit wobbly. So I prefer uh, scissors that have a serrated blade and if you could see these up close you would see very fine teeth on the edge of the blades of the scissor and when we actually go to cut we get a nice clean sharp cut and nice clean straight edges. So these are highly recommended. You can also use uh, weights to help hold down your fabric but don't be shy with pins. That's very important to make sure you use a lot of pins when you're working with this sheer fabric. Okay, we're ready to head over to the machine to do some straight stitching. I'm gonna grab the wrap so I can show you a few details while we get set up. Now, you take a look, we've got two machines here and there's a reason for that. We have a lot of different options available to us today and many computerized machines have a lot of decorative stitches built in, zigzag stitches and all of those stitches require a wide throat plate opening. If you look at the throat plate of the machine we have here on the right, you're going to see that's a very wide opening and you can see from the stitch menu that there are a lot of decorative stitches there that would require that wide opening. Well, when it comes to sewing on soft sheer fabric, that can be a little bit of an issue. So, if you notice, we've got the um, machine set up for straight stitching and our needle is, is actually in the um, left position. And that's something we find very common on our computerized machines. And there's a very specific reason for that. When the needle is in the left, you get support at the front of the throat plate, 
the side of the throat plate, and the back of the throat plate. So when you're sewing on sheer soft fabrics, it's less likely for the fabric to actually get pulled um, to the underneath side. Now we have another option and that is on a machine like this. We've got a straight stitch foot and a straight stitch throat plate set up on this machine. So that's actually even a better option if it's available to you. So check and see if you can do that in your machine. When you have a straight stitch throat plate and a straight stitch foot, you have a very small opening and you have almost no chance for that sheer soft fabric to be pushed. So you get a very fine stitch quality. So we're ready to start stitching and I'm going to show you how we do the shoulder seams on the sheer wrap and then I'm going to show you how to do the hemming technique. So we've got the um, stitch length shortened just a little bit here to 1.8. We've got our needle in the center needle position and it's really interesting if we take a look at this machine when the straight stitch throat plate is on, we can't even make a mistake and select a stitch that would be too wide and would swing to the left or right and break that needle. So that's a good thing. So let's talk about some of the things you need to be um, thinking about when you're going to sew on sheer fabrics. First of all, it's going to be very important that your thread matches very well to your fabric. So make sure you um, check that when you're, when you're purchasing your thread and your fabric. Do it at the same time and get a very good match there because your fabric is sheer and it's going to show through. You also want to work with a fine, sharp needle. Now, I actually um, like to use a size of about 8 or 10, so think about that. Now, we're going to use a French seam to sew those shoulders. So I've got the steps already sh here for you so you can see how you do that. The first step is to sew a seam a scant 3 eighths of an inch. When you're done with that, you're going to then take that seam and you're going to trim the seam allowance to just a little bit wider than an eighth of an inch. The next step then is going to be to press that seam and you can see my eighth of an inch is on the inside. We're going to fold it and press that seam so that the stitching line is at the top edge. We've literally sealed the raw edge of that fabric inside those layers. We start out, by the way, sewing wrong sides together so that our final is right sides. And then we're going to take one final seam and that's going to enclose that. We're going to stitch that at a quarter of an inch. Now, if you notice my blue tape on there, that's because when you're sewing with shears, it's very often hard to tell the right side from the wrong side. So make sure you mark that at the very beginning. So we're ready to, um, to do the hem. And you can see I've already stitched one line of stitching, a uh, half inch from the raw edge. Then it's a simple matter of pressing on that stitched line, folding under your raw edge. Don't be shy about using pins. That seam gauge works really well for sewing that um, half inch, but when you go to sew the second line of stitching, which is actually your, your hem, you don't need that. I've got a little tail of stabilizer that's going to help me anchor. I'm going to lower my presser foot and I'm going to stitch right along that folded edge. Very smooth and very easy. Now you see how that line of stitching allows me to just turn and fold so that it actually stabilizes the fabric and gives me a, a, a guideline for where to fold that. You can also see why it's so important for that thread to match. Let me take this out so you can see what this looks like. This is water soluble stabilizer so when we're done we'll dissolve it away. I made sure I used dark thread so that you could see that. Remember, you want to you use thread that matches very close. So now that you know how to cut and sew sheer fabrics, I hope you'll visit the website, download instructions to make the pattern for your own sheer, wonderful wearable wrap.